for me personally, I only jumped on the train of Volume 9 and really started watching Ruby or at least caring about it when basically Ruby just lashed out and basically just ran off her on her own to the whole place where Neo was and then all the way up to that point. And that's where my interest kind of peaked at. But then at the same time, I wanted to learn everything else about Ruby. So I decided to watch a whole bunch of videos about what are the problems in Ruby and a whole bunch of them and just keep going on and on and on and basically figured out that, yeah, the show is not necessarily handled in the way it should. Now, I'm not necessarily going to go into every little bit of detail and everything from the beginning and everything behind the scenes because you know all that story. But I'm just going to basically focus it on my perspective on what I think is the main problem of Ruby. And that's just going to be how it is for me, honestly. Now, I'm not asking you to honestly just be agreeing with me or anything I say, basically, because, again, I'm an outside person. The only, first, the only episode of Ruby I ever watched was the first ever episode. And when it comes down to things, I just didn't have the drive and care to really watch it anymore. But when it comes down to things, I still did like the concept of what it was. I didn't necessarily hate anything that Ruby did or what it was trying to do, you know? But when I started to really realize what was going on, then, yeah, I'm starting to kind of get a little bit on the huh side of things and even if i was just shown this without looking at any of the hate videos i would certainly still be like well this is kind of confusing and ba having backwards rick retconning stuff all the time type of mentality like what's going on here so yeah the main problems in ruby i say it has is its characters and its story more specifically the main four characters of the show and obviously the story has a bunch of things that's very not good honestly now, Ruby has a ton of problems, mainly from what I've heard, it's power problems, mainly because people can't necessarily know what the hell semblances are, what auras are, or what magic can do, honestly. From what I understand, it seems like semblance and magic seem to be two different things, and aura might be thrown along with it some way, but it looks like they do the same thing, and no one really understands exactly what makes them different or how it all works out and stuff like that. Also, there was a point where a semblance can evolve, which was had no setup to it, honestly. Which I would say that's not good. I mean, if you have if you have an ability that's already in the story, and then something happens to it, and there's no setup to it, that feels a bit weird. At least my hero had the quirk singularity. At least they had talked about when you know the first quirk was here and. All of these other kids start getting quirks and shit. And so the ability to evolve those quirks may not seem that far-fetched. And then when Toga did it, it made a shit ton of sense. But when Ruby does it, it feels a bit weird. It's like we just give you a Zenkai boost for a Zenkai boost for some reason. You know, it, it feels like it's some Dragon Ball Z shit. Except at least with Dragon Ball Z, it feels kind of earned. Or at least it's been trained to happen, honestly. And you kind of expect there's a new power-up in some shape and form. But... With Ruby, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like they just give characters what they need because they have to write it in to be so. And if that was going to be the case, then you should have just made the story meta. Not no Velma meta, but meta enough to understand what the hell is going on with the characters. And then the Silver Eyes was actually a cool concept that I really liked. I did not realize that there was no substance to it because there's not really much explaining about the Silver Eyes for some damn reason. And... Honestly, this is the thing with powers and stuff like that, right? It's like, you can have a power where it's absolutely bonkers or it's crazy OP or something like that. And you don't have to explain the fullness of it, but give it something to give some type of information to the audience about, okay, so how does this power kind of work, you know, or what causes it? We know what causes it, you know, we know what it's... We know what it's for, essentially, but it doesn't really give you a lot of substance outside of that, you know? It doesn't really give you a lot of ideas of what you can use as, like, the limits of it, or can you spam it, or something like that, you know? It just feels like there's a bit of things that's missing to the whole pieces, and it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. Even when it comes to, like, even when it comes to, like, some Kingdom Hearts darkness power nonsense, even though it's darkness and it's has a lot of different rabbit holes that could go down to it still has a reason for what it does and how certain things come to be of it but ruby doesn't necessarily has that and it feels a bit weird one of my biggest things that i personally have with this show that i don't necessarily like and i think this is shared amongst 
some people in the community as well when it comes to that. Granted, I'm not part of the community, but whatever. And it's the fact that there is a lack of punishment when it comes to the story. Now, when I've seen certain bits and heard certain parts of Ruby that kind of happen, it seemed like a Team Ruby makes a shit ton of mistakes. And that's perfectly fine. If your characters make mistakes, that's fine. You know, things like that should happen. However, it seems like almost every single time a mistake happens when the whole situation kind of get resolved everything kind of goes back to normal and everybody's kind of happy and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense like i think there was a point where ruby you know had jacked up a whole town or something like that and maybe grim and them kind of invaded the whole place marking some people in the process but in the end everything was kind of okay for some reason and everybody just moved on like nothing happened then you also have the whole thing with Ironwood, which I've seen tons of videos of people complaining about that shit, which I had to vibe with that. I had to vibe with what they were saying, you know, because it just seemed like a lot of shit just kind of went crazy for the sake of him being Ironwood, being like an asshole for some reason. And it's not necessarily a proper thing. Mainly, it feels like you just like, oh, male is wrong, female is right, or some shit like that. Or maybe in an in-depth way, maybe it's something else too. I mean, from what I've seen and heard from a lot of it, it was this dude, Oscar, or Ozpin, or maybe they're the same dang person from what I understand. It seemed like they had to lie to the team basically to keep them all safe because the Grim is somehow using negative emotions or something like that to you know about to jump team ruby or some shit and so he kept that a secret but team ruby got pissed off about that but then when they lied to ironwood about something and apparently it's a big thing that they should have kind of told ironwood honestly even if they didn't necessarily trust the man all the way but still they got mad at well really ironwood got pissed off at team ruby but then they say no that is not happening not in our story you're our bitch now or some shit like that and it doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense honestly hell even in volume 9 the, the literal finale of volume 9 where basically i think i think the cat was like on some shit where it was talking about like yo you be making all these mistakes you a bitch you a hoe you ain't doing nothing but working at hooters and you a Thought ass bitch Ruby and literally Yang was like you did none of that stuff Ruby I'm like have you been watching the same show I haven't watched the show for long and I know that she fucked up that she jacked up a lot of times like it's not necessarily that hard to see even if you're a person that has only watched one whole ass episode and if you heard some stuff about it I guarantee you they would agree with the whole fact that, nah, I don't know what you're talking about, Yang. You're kind of tripping. So, I don't know where she was coming from with that. But definitely, there is a lot of times where they have certain moments and they do certain things and literally could destroy a lot of shit and make things go wrong. But yet, they still get a reward in the end. It feels weird. I'm sorry, but if something bad happens in the story and a character did something where... Yeah, it might be a mistake, it still needs to be a punishment for them in some shape and form. It just feels like there needs to be. Or if they're not, it's going to be a punishment. There needs to be an absolute valid explanation on why there's not a punishment. Which makes me begs the question, honestly, and makes me wonder, does Team Ruby look at their old work and even just try to go back and understand why certain things work out the way they do and try to figure out why they can add a punishment here and there and then just retcon it for some reason. It doesn't make a whole bunch of sense. It, 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 Ruby is just played with a lot of retcons from what I understand too. Even with the ever after what recently just happened, Ruby fell into the tree and was supposed to be changed up into a different person. But because she chose herself, she's okay. I'm not necessarily gonna lie. I feel like the tree should have changed her just a bit. Or at least a little bit, honestly. I'm not necessarily saying she needs to completely be different, but she needs to be a bit different after that, you know? She needs to change up a little bit on how she is. Because from what I've seen and how this thing might go, Season 10 might just start out with her just being chill as hell like per usual, and then they go to Vacuo and just chill like nothing ever really happened and the ever after didn't really happen. And all that type of stuff. And it's like, well, that really shouldn't be the case. Hell, even my story sometimes can have a punishment, which 
I'm not necessarily going to go into the big deepest things just in case someone new is watching this entire channel or video. But when it comes down to things, the reason why he has like a punishment is because Jay keeps summoning people to his reality of what he wants to see, you know, arrive there. And every time he does that, every time he brings a character into his own reality, he ends up becoming a character himself. Meaning if he go back into the real world, honestly, that just means that he's going to become a character and kind of not necessarily be the same as he wants before. What does that mean? You have to kind of watch the series to know. And it's a bit ominous. But when it comes down to things, there is a punishment for him going back. Yeah, he can go back, but he's not going to be the same anymore. So there is a punishment in that because you did something that you wanted to do. Basically making a selfish decision of your own action. But Team Ruby, nah, what's punishment, bro? Or <laughs> just, just, just let the writers take care of it. It's mad easy. Anyway, the last thing I really want to talk about Ruby, honestly, that kind of drives me up a wall, is its characters. And it's the main damn girls of the show. I'm not necessarily going to lie, it doesn't even feel like Ruby is the leader half the time. Like, uh, from what I've seen and what I've played, meaning Blaze Blue cross tag battle, I'm not necessarily going to lie. It just seems like Weiss is the leader of the actual gang, and Ruby doesn't necessarily know what she's doing. It's like she's questioning herself majority of the time, and maybe that has changed. Maybe she's actually making decisions now, but from the track record of the show, I wouldn't be surprised if that's a lie. Ruby just doesn't look like she has the confidence in what she needs to do, which maybe now that will change in season 10, but again, we'll have to see, and granted, again, the track record of the show doesn't make any type of good hopes that that is the case. Yang, who used to be fun as hell, seems serious and more asshole -ish now than she ever was, which... Why did they ruin such a good character? In fact, Yang was one of the people I actually really liked in the damn show. Don't really care for her now that I heard that, though. It just makes her boring, honestly. Just You can have the seriousness with the fun side of things. It's called multiple personality traits that a person can have, dumbass. Then Blake, by far one of the most egregious people in this show that has been done dirty, who I honestly think Blake was the coolest character in the show and my personal favorite, but they end up changing her mysterious and cool badass tone to be more open and more bland as shit honestly like why are you even here then you also have weiss who is the main focus of the show because it feels like she is honestly sometimes because she just feels like she's the damn leader yet she also feels like she's just there half the time and just does magic shit because she has magic in the shit and whatever and just I don't necessarily know. It, it just feels a bit weird. Also, I'm gonna say this because I'm I don't really care. It's my video. Screw you. Bumblebee thing. That just feels like a whole thing to get some better press on Rooster Teeth. I'm not necessarily gonna lie. Like they just did that just because they like, oh yeah, we had like a lot of bad shit. But hey, you know, Yang and Blake are gay now, so accept it as a thing. Which Honestly, I don't feel like they should have been a thing. I want to be very honest with you. I feel like they were badass sisters, and that's what they should have stayed like. It feels like Ruby is just a, like a, a little group, like a little sisterhood of women who actually can beat some ass and actually do some things and be heroes. But with that, it just feels like you're just forcing the hand of something for no reason at the end of the day. It feels like they should just be badass sisters. And just leave it at that. Why does every single piece of media that happens nowadays when it comes to modern characters, why did they have to bring up a gay trope or something like that? If you want to do it, fine. But at the same time, you don't need to put that shit in every single piece of media. I would like to see Blake and Yang be just badass without loving each other, honestly. The next thing I'm going to see is a freaking sex scene where Blake and Yang are just doing it. And it's going to be a worse than like The Last of Us Part 2. Is it necessary? No. Is it even good? No. Even though Blake and Yang are way hotter, but still nonetheless, no. I don't need to see it. Honestly, just give me an NTR. That will make it 10 times better. And I hate NTR. But when it comes down to things, I just feel like there is a lot of problems. And the biggest, fattest problem of all day and why this can honestly be changed up is Rooster Teeth itself. When it comes down to things, they treat Ruby like a cash cow. So, of course, they're not necessarily going to care about the story. They're just going to make sure they're just telling a story to make it, you know, keep them having profits in their pockets and stuff like that. They don't really care because if they did... A lot of that retcon shit wouldn't happen. A lot of that shit with Ironwood wouldn't have happened. A lot of that shit with the characters themselves 
when it had to happen, honestly. Now, granted, from what I understand too, it seemed like Volume 1 wasn't all that great and really Ruby wasn't just good story-wise, honestly. It was just badass women doing badass things. But when it comes down to things, it just doesn't hit right. Something about Ruby is just broken and it feels wrong. And it should be fixed, but it's not. And I don't know why, honestly. I feel like even I could come in and just for a season, make a whole ass good season with what I got and what I know and just make it better than anything that Rooster Teeth could do. It just feels that kind of way, you know? Not trying to shit on, you know, again, Ruby as a concept and what the characters are, but they be effing them up. I'm not necessarily gonna lie. From what I understand and from what I've seen, it just feels not great, honestly. The one of my other favorite characters is Neapolitan. And to be perfectly honest, when I was seeing Neo just beating the shit out of freaking Ruby, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I mean, I, don't, I mean, I don't like you hitting Ruby like that because Ruby kind of fine, but okay, okay, yeah, yeah, all right, all right, that's why I like to see Neo do your thing. And then Neo got put into a damn tree, and now she's just stuck there forever or some shit. Or maybe not, because since Ruby got out easy as hell, I'm pretty sure Neo can get out easy as hell without changing out a damn thing. So, I don't know. It, it just feels like the show just have too many ways safe. It just show it just has too many safety Dragon Ball measures without actually having Dragon Balls in it. Like, you sh or, uh, the characters should be allowed to make mistakes and F up those mistakes as well and then at times receive thorough punishment. If you gotta kill one of the main characters out of Ruby, then kill him. It is what it is. If Weiss gotta die, Weiss gotta die. It is what it is. If it's gonna make Ruby and them actually be freaking solid and actually have a good story for once and actually try to do something impressive, then I'm all for it because the way the story is being told, the way Crunch, not Crunchyroll, but Rooster Teeth is basically telling the story and how they're doing things, it, it feels like it's just a waste of time. It, it just feels like it's a waste of time. And people can write better fan fictions and better stuff better than what Ruby even tells himself. And I already been kind of didn't want to, you know, I guess trust too much on Ruby and what they're gonna do in the future of it, of the show and stuff like that. I didn't want to really trust it like that. Mainly because DC, they have a relationship with DC, which do I really need to explain anything honestly? DC has not been, hasn't really been that great for a while. I'm gonna be very honest with you. DC has a lot of shit they need to actually do to make themselves good. And then that would just only make them decent honestly, which DC is probably never gonna really get good ever again, honestly. It, it, it is what it is. The fact that they combine, it just feels weird and off and I don't necessarily know why that's a thing. But anyway, that's basically all I really want to say for this one, so hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification on the way out, so also follow me on the socials, and if you'd like to donate to the channel, Patreon is available as well. And until then, it's your boy Jay, signing off. Have a stay.